Hey internet, what's up? Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about Raspberry Pi stuff for a little bit. I never made that build log and I'm sorry. You know how life gets. Uh, work, lots of work, a bunch of personal bullshit. I'm sorry. But I'll have some more information about a possible build log at the end of this video. So first thing that I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about is uh, this little guy right here. This is my uh, Raspberry Pi Pocket. Pretty nifty, I must say. Got a Raspberry Pi A Plus in there. It's got a uh, 2.4 inch screen, a 2500 milliamp hour battery, got a 32 gig uh, micro SD card for storage, which is more, way more space than what I want for, you know, what I want to use this for. I followed my own advice and I got the, uh, the PowerBoost 1000 as opposed to the uh, PowerBoost 500, which I used in my uh, Raspberry Pi Boy, my other one. My first build. With this guy, I went with the uh, Raspberry Pi A+. I went with that because I just wanted something small, you know, like fits in the palm of my hand pretty much. I do have big man hands though. I wanted something small that I could play classic games on. My first Raspberry Pi Game Boy that I wanted to do everything. Like I wanted to be able to emulate every single system, so I, you know, I added all the buttons for it. You know, I had four shoulder buttons and four face buttons. This, however, as you can see, just the two buttons. No shoulder buttons, none of that. Since the Raspberry Pi A Plus is lower powered, I figured it would be the uh, the perfect thing for this. I, mean, I would have rather used a Raspberry Pi Zero, as that can do everything the A Plus can do. And it's much smaller, and it only costs five friggin' dollars. But because it only costs five friggin' dollars, it's out of stock everywhere. I check all the time, because when I see some, I want to buy like five of them, you know, so I can you know do more you know little random projects like this. Because you know this is what I do for fun. I love it. The Raspberry Pi Zero, always out of stock. Always, it's a pain in the ass. So. I went with the uh, A plus in here, and my uh, my original plan for this guy was have it look almost completely stock. Like the only thing that you'd be able to tell would be like you know the the USB port, and I don't know maybe well the fact that it's a color screen that that's one giveaway obviously. But yeah, that was that was my plan with this lower emulation power, so keep it stock. Only emulating things that have you know the the two face buttons. NES Game Boy. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, uh, what else did I put on here? Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Turbo Graphics, Wonder Swan Color, Wonder Swan, Atari 2600 and 7800, the Atari Lynx, Game Gear, Sega Master System. But yeah, that, that was the plan with this. Near the very end of the build, however, I got kind of discouraged because when I was finally trying to piece everything together, shove it all in the, the case, um, I discovered that even though it's a Raspberry Pi A+, Plus, which is smaller, it's you know, much smaller than the, uh, the Model B size boards, um, I just couldn't get everything to fit. I actually used the PCB from this Game Boy Pocket for the controllers, so that takes up a good amount of space, you know. I got discouraged when I figured out that everything doesn't fit. So, here's what we're looking at now. The, uh, I can't get the, the back door to close here. Um, let me see if you can tell why. See that? Yeah, that... That's why right there. Can't get it to close. And I could not figure out a better spot for this. I love the form factor of the pocket. It, it's just, it's really cool. So yeah, while being cool, it's again not complete, just like my last one. I've got a, I'm starting to make a pattern here. I had all kinds of plans for all the different shit I was going to do with this, and I just wasn't able to make them all work out the way that I wanted to. So while I was building this. 
I uh, I used my uh, my first build, my first uh, Game Boy Raspberry Pi. Um, I took it apart and used it for reference. You know, just looking at you know where I wired certain things, how everything fit together, that kind of shit. But while I had it open, somehow the screen got fucked up. Part of the ribbon cable got torn. Torn ribbon cable, that's a dead product pretty much. Right around the time that that happened is uh, when the Raspberry Pi 3 was released. And with a broken Raspberry Pi Game Boy, you know, broken screen, and other things that I wanted to fix about it, uh, I decided that I'd pretty much go back to the drawing board, rebuild my first Game Boy Raspberry Pi. I use a Raspberry Pi 3, make it look nicer, make it look complete. I, I think I figured out a few things that I can do to make it better than it was. One thing is this. Aftermarket replacement case shell, whatever you want to call it. Um, everything looks, you know, nice and just ready to accept hardware, basically. I'm gonna use this guy for the shell so that I'll, uh, I'll end up, you know, having it look like an actual Game Boy this time instead of that white, weird white brick, which was cool. It worked well at the time. And the reason why I used that was because I didn't know this kind of thing existed at the time. And like I said in my very first Raspberry Pi video, I didn't want to destroy and ruin perfectly good working classic hardware. So that's why I went with that case. But they make this kind of thing. Oh, and on that, you know, not wanting to destroy working classic hardware, um, this, this was a Christmas gift. And it was a wonderful Christmas gift. Uh, I freaking love this thing. It was a Christmas gift just this past Christmas, not like when I was a kid or anything. My uh, my mother got this for me. She found it on my Amazon wish list. The thing about buying, you know, these things sight unseen is that they can sometimes have problems. Like this one, the uh, the screen, the screen was completely screwed, and it made me really sad. But I. Uh, Brought it back to life in a form by uh, using it for, you know, this little thing. With uh, redoing the the new or redoing the old Game Boy build, um, I'm going to be doing it with a Raspberry Pi three. Got you know brand new Raspberry Pi three right here. These things are really neat looking. Same exact form factor as the two, but this time I'm going to be getting more in depth with the actual modding. First time that I did it, I was not very sure in my soldering skills. So, you know, like on that board, I left things like um, the uh, uh, HDMI port. I think I left the, the sound port. I left uh, the uh, the camera camera port, the uh, display port, and I left all of the uh, the GPIO pins, left all of these. So, um, I mean, I, I did remove, you know, the four USB ports and the uh, the Ethernet jack there, but even still, you know, that makes it, with all this stuff, it makes it a, uh, a fairly tall board, relatively, I suppose. However, when I made this guy, um, I went all out with the uh, the removal like i mean right here there's the gpio right here there's the, the gpio stuff i uh you know slimmed it down all the way as thin as it can get so i'm going to be doing a similar thing with this board i'm going to take off everything um including you know the the power jack because i'm going to be powering directly through gpio so no need Actually, no need for any of these ports. Everything's going to be soldered on directly. Because before, like with the GPIO, I actually used a uh, GPIO ribbon cable that just, you know, plugs right into the GPIO there. And that itself adds even more height. That was one of the things that I was having problems with with my uh, first build was everything was really, really tight in there. No room to move. With this one, it's going to be a lot thinner. It's going to give me a lot more room and I'm happy about that. So this time I'm going to do my best 
to try and take more pictures while he's doing it. Oh, that that was another thing with the uh, the first you know build log that never happened. Um, I thought I took a lot more pictures of my build process than I did. I ended up not having half the pictures that I thought I had. You know, while I was like in there soldering something, like oh, I should I should take a picture of this while I'm doing it, and, and I was just you know thinking about it, not actually doing it, because I was so into the actual build. So I'm gonna try to take more pictures. I'm gonna try to uh, actually make a build log. Um, that's pretty much it, I guess. I'm gonna get more in depth. Gonna try harder this time. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I just, I, I had ideas, things I can do to make things easier. It might work. Okay. So, I now have ideas on things to try. All right. So, I guess I'll, uh, I'll get back to you guys at a later date when I have some progress made on this. Because right now, um, we're just about to start up a brand new work project, so... I'm going to be traveling a lot and I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to actually work on this because I'm going to be staying in hotels and hotels frown upon smoke and soldering creates little wisps of smoke and I'm afraid to, to set off the uh, the fire alarm or the sprinklers in the hotel. That would be bad. Yeah. So, soon, TM, I will have, I'll have some updates for you guys. Alright. Thanks guys. Have a good one.